Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legacy European Tour Finals. And we're here. This is the finals. This is the top eight now. We started this weekend with 471 players. Whittled it down to 110. Invited them all back today. They've been battling out all day. Some players are walking out of this room with Pro Tour invites. Two players are walking away with Worlds invites. And that is who is going to be in our main feature match. My name is Will. This is Matei. And we're going to carry you through this awesome final that we have. This is the bracket on the screen. Break this down for us, Matei. It was a story of Esper Legends throughout this tournament with both Nico Boni and Torov Sever on the same list, mm -hmm. uh, crushing the Swiss, finishing first and second in a tournament. And now we'll see if Severin can uh, avenge his teammate Nico Boni and defeat the Esper Legends slayer himself, Michael Robach. He, he's, he's done supremely well to defeat multiple Esper Legends that go on his run to the finals. But Torov Severin is going to be on the play. Mm -hmm. and he's, going, he's out to seek revenge. We've seen this multiple times. You know, where Torov lost to him in the Swiss. But I was speaking to him between rounds, speaking to his teammates, and they reckon he's, he's at a disadvantage here. He reckons this build of Grixis he's up against is tailored to beat this Esper Legends deck. Mainly the four copies of Cut Down in the main. Here's our cameras, both our players shuffling up, getting ready. And it looks like they're off to the races. So starting off, turn off with a tap land. Going into turn two. Talia? Yeah. Talia, exactly how he writes that. This is what he needs. This is the curve he's going to want to have. If he, uh, Torov being the higher seed, he's being on the play and playing a turn two Thalia is so extremely important for, for this deck because it just allows you to stay on the front foot, keep your, keep your opponent on toes. But Michael is ready as he was against Nico Boni with a cut down in his hand. And we're going to see that. That's good. Thalia, yep, kill the Thalia. Rafine resolves, but now does Michael have an answer to that? I never cut down off the top. Okay. We, I, I don't want to call it early. <laughs> well, well, this, is, this is a bit early to call it, yes. But, we, you know, we saw Michael kind of ripping in the game in the quarters. We're going to see him here rip exactly what he needs, but he's going to go with using all his mana up here, being more mm. mana efficient. How important is it to try and, you know, use all your mana up in a turn? Uh, very much so. Uh, the, these matchups can be very tempo dependent, so you want to maximize your turns, maximize your playing. There's an Adeline for, for Torolf. And just Maybe. another Shattered Sanctum, but I think Michael has not only another cut down, he has another go for the throat and a Shieldred. All Jeez. the cards that you need for this matchup. Early removal, land a Shieldred, try to get that advantage on the board, and uh, then go start slowly churning through your deck with your Harvesters, Appraisers, Fables, and so on. Exactly, and while having Adelina with no other creatures on the board, it is able to have the one mana answer for it. Absolutely how we read it up over on Michael's side, and he is... We call it cooking on gas in the military. Mm -hmm. Everything is going his way currently. Yeah, there's a Razor Lash Transmogger. That's a bit more uh, better against the all the removal that Mi Michael has. But that, that's, where the sh that's where the Shieldred comes in. Yeah, Shieldred tends to be a good blocker, have been a, a 4 5. That is a bank rush off the top. Mm -hmm. Do we have a fifth land? Don't believe we do. But that just means we've got a whole load of gas there. as the Shieldred does come down here. There she is. <laughs> Big thumbs up from Torolf there. He's like, great. That's exactly <laughs> what I need to see. You were going, removal, removal, removal into Shieldred. Rips the turn. What have we got? Definitely got at least a land in hand. We're attacking. Okay. It, it, again, in these spots, if you if you just tune in, if you haven't seen what happens here, is that if, if the if block happens, and again, a Gendra is bound to come from the Esper Legend side to deal four damage to the blocker and finish it off. So no blocks from Mikhail. He knows that the Shieldred is too valuable to, to throw away like this. He wants to start milking the advantage, has probably going to play the Bang Buster, start drawing cards, gain some life, and start pinging away. That's a rough for 12, having to pass the turn back, just making a land drop and go. We're now getting in there with that shield dread. Obviously, as we said, four damage does not deal with five, so that's quite safe attack there for us. Yep. Are we going to see the Bankbuster come down? I think so. Bankbuster, tapped land, pass. And we're tapping it. Remember, I believe both these players are Germans as well, so Germans having to take down the European team. Actually. Oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe uh, not. Michael is actually Austrian. Oh, okay. He's from, I talked to him. He's from near Vienna. Uh, a lot of my local players know him from, from the RCQ scene. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's, he's, well, it's, it's going really well for him currently, as we're going to see the artwork uh, bounce the um, shield at end of turn, by the looks like. Yeah. That's oh, one way to temporarily did. get rid of the shield red. He did bounce it, right? Am I? He's it's not in the graveyard. Oh, I think something's... I definitely did see the artwork come right? down. Right? We'll see. Uh, it's now in his hand for some reason. Yeah, he probably uh, like changed his mind a little bit here. 
He does play very aggressive. Yeah, like, like yeah Toro like, has a style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was telling him about it. He was like, "What me?" I was like, "Yeah, you play super aggressive." Oh yeah, he doesn't have blue mana because he didn't have a legend in place. So, oh, uh, but he does the dark dark stick yeah. first. So we're gonna see the main to draw a little bit of life gain first. We still don't know if we've got a, a land drop for this turn that we're about to have. Yep. We've got another draw though, another trigger. That's the land by the looks of it. That's gonna give us a sick one. This is where we can start parrying, playing. Two of our three mana powerhouse spells. We do have an invoke as well if we need to. Yeah, five five land in hand, or, uh, five cards in hand for Mikhail. He's uh, he's doing well for himself. Doesn't have to rush it. You have he has Shieldred. He has the Bankbuster. Uh, he has another Shieldred in his hand as well. That's not particularly useful, but you know, always fodder for Fable is always nice. Exactly. You know, and they can take their time. This is open deck list. It's been open deck list all weekend. They've already played each other once. Yep. Who was the winner in that match? Uh, Mikhail Roberg. He's he's the kryptonite for for uh, Toralf and his team. He's already defeated both Toralf and Nico Boni twice. So he he has this match of practice. I would say. Exactly. We're taking now Nico twice with their only losses for the whole turn, and this looks like it is the invoke coming down. So we're going to sacrifice a creature. No enchantment, no planeswalker, so we will take four points damage and draw another two cards if we didn't have enough. <laughs> with a shield red on the battlefield. Yeah. And uh the maybe I don't think Torov minds that much that raises the last Transmog and died. He can bring it back. There's four more basic lands, uh four more non basic lands actually on the other side of the board. So that was uh Grick's command off top. Ooh, so maybe command, next turn yeah. we can see that kind of maybe try and get a big swing in, especially the shield red coming in for four now. Can't block yeah, it's already down to eight, right? Like the the chip damage from Invoke and Shieldred really adds up. Well, this means this will drop down to four, right? Yeah. So yeah, we potentially we could see a real quick game one here and see Mike go up a game in the finals, one step closer to taking these trophies in front of us, taking the extra money. There is six thousand dollars on the line for one of these two players that wins. They're both guaranteed at least ten thousand, but one of them will walk around with an extra six thousand in their pocket. We're gonna see this returned. Yep, Razor Lash comes back for the discount, two mana. That was a go for the throw off the top? Mm -hmm. Just what just what the doctor ordered. Joel's going to have a little look-see as he does drop down to two. <laughs> well, they're not blocking, so I guess they're attacking. <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, uh, Skrull can do, do some other things as well. But Torov needs some answers and needs them fast. And we know that Ro Michael actually has another children in his hand. And there's also the threat of that bankbuster attacking. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that Torov didn't like fire off the Ultra War a little bit sooner. Well, I, sp I suppose we're, sh we're holding it up now, right? For if that uh, yeah, bankbuster yeah. gets gets crude. Yeah, but then he's life. dying to then he's dying to the trigger from the shoulder on his turn if he's down to two life. So he's he has to cover a lot of angles, and I I don't think his deck uh, oh, allows. We've got a second shield dread. Yeah, brought to the front there. Yep. getting slammed. We can bounce it the Orwara, but then we're, we're you know we're, we're kind of screwed really. I don't think we've got <laughs> out. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So yeah. Crew the bank That's yeah, enough for twelve. To Look, he's this doing version, it again. like this version of the deck. I mean, he's really pre sideboarded for this, and it's uh, I would say unusual. Uh, a lot of people, you know, Grixis mid range uh, has been the most popular deck on day one with twenty eight percent of the mid game. Day two, like thirty three percent. So by far the most. Like the dominant deck in the room, uh, doing well, like placing three people in the top eight as well, and placing, of course, many, many more in. A but this build's slightly different to that, right? This that this build has got that we're down on bankbusters, but we're up on the cuts, and yeah, it is actually it's all the difference. difference yeah, yeah, all the difference so far in this meta. It, it also another innovation from uh, from Mikhail is the fact that he's playing two graveyard trespassers uh, in the main deck. So even in, uh, in the sort of mirror matches, he's allow uh, he's. He can use his cut downs to kill bot pet harvesters or goblin shamans and then land his graveyard trespasser, which can be annoying to deal with uh, once they start going because of that ward discard a card clause. So. Okay, we've seen this matchup a lot this weekend. We've seen various different builders going about what here do you think he can bring in to kind of shore this up and take down and home this trophy? Yeah, the cards I'm sure about that he's bringing in is at least the Paris de Grasps. We, we saw those. Brotherhood's End as well. I think he's going to go up to two at least, possibly mm -hmm. three. And the second Gixis command, we also saw that he brought it in against, when he played against Gabriel Nassif. So it won him the game, actually, right? Yeah, we, exactly. We saw it come down. We, 
hitting both of those. Let's see what we've got on the other side of the battlefield here. Yeah, so this is the build from Toral Seren that everyone in the room was buzzing about because there were four players, uh, players on the deck. Uh, three of them made the top 36, mm -hmm. two made top eight, so, uh, and one of them went uh, qualified for Worlds. So a huge win for that team. And uh, the tech in this deck is the wedding announcement. The four wedding announcements in the main deck, along with two Razor Lash Transmogrants as well, to try to metagame against the Grixis decks that they knew that would be present. And they felt they had a bunch of decent matchups as well against you know, decks like mono white mid range mono blue azorius soldiers is is i would say again another matchup which is definitely playable where the rafines can do uh like insane amount of work on top of the four shielded no mm. urti resurrected no ao the don't sky just finish the curve off at four get get, get the curve on you know and what a four drop we spoke about before remember when siege runner was a card yeah <laughs> shit Okay, there's no power creep in Magic, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry about that, but Shieldrow is just a very good card. So we're going to go back down. Looks like the players are shuffling up. They did have the opportunity to look at each other's deck list, as this is an open deck list tournament. So there's no nothing to play around. Plus, they played already. They know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we've seen this matchup multiple times, and we've been saying that the S, this Esper Legends deck is the killer of Grixis. They brought this deck to yeah. deal with these Grixis decks that they thought were going to turn up. The, more the reanimator ones than the, you know, the straight sort of controlly mid-range ones we're yeah. seeing here. But on the flip side to that, he flipped it on his head. And he's like, well, I'm going to get rid of this, like, sort of controlly strategy. I'm just going to go full on kill spells, keep everything down, keep everything at bay, and then we'll finish off with mm -hmm. these shield dreads. Yeah, I mean, the four cut downs in the main, again, four go for the throws are not usual. I mean, a lot of people have adjusted to the aggressive shift in metagame and start maybe running one or two cut downs, like going up to three or four after sideboard. But not not that heavy in the main deck, and it's just been working for Michael. He's actually went nine and zero yesterday, so yeah. he was the only undefeated. Undefeated, undefeated, only undefeated player after the end of day one. And then, uh, like you know, had a, a couple of small stumbles. He did actually lose to Gabriel Nassif earlier in the day. Um, I should uh, avenge that. Though. Avenge that in the quarterfinals, so we got past that. Then Nico Boni is actually his third Esper Legends matchup. Yeah, in the top eight, <laughs> it's a, just like kill, you know, like one, two, keep three. Keep doing what you're doing, and you're gonna walk home with one of these trophies in front of us. There will be a players interview with the winner, so make sure after this match you do stick around. We'll be giving them an interview, wondering why, why did they turn up with these decks? Why did they have so many of whatever cards in their decks? You know, it's still all to play for. Trough is still one of the best players we've seen in Magic. Is a PT champion. And well, he, he yeah. is a game down here though. So yeah. you know what I mean. He's been in these hard spots before. Let's see if he can get himself out of it. Torov is uh, not. I mean, he's known to have a wide range of decks to play, but of course, he's mo no most known for uh, winning a Pro Tour with his tr uh, trusty Tron deck. Yeah. In London, I think. Mm. Was it London? It might have been London, actually. I think I was there, yeah. It was good. It, I mean, in Toral, uh, everyone, uh, I mean, we've got quite a few viewers here. I definitely recommend, uh, if, you, if you want more of Toral, he's such a great character uh go and find the card market youtube channel uh go su subscribe help them out and their videos are super fun i i wholeheartedly recommend them do you know who else has a youtube channel legacy you'll be able to find all the past pods from all the different stops that we've had from the other finals that we've had in sophia and this final will end up on there very shortly probably by the end of the weekend so if you did miss any of the rounds you can go back and watch them because obviously twitch deletes vods so yeah you know we pick them up on youtube so you can go and watch them back at your leisure yeah, and if you if you just want to watch more Magic you've, uh, this weekend, you you didn't have enough of all oh, of our coverage. So much. Uh, you can just go over to the Twitch Hall, uh, uh, the Will Hall X EXP <laughs> uh, Twitch channel, watch some old Magic coverage as well. Hey, it's a little plug there. Thanks. I'll sip you that tenner later. I'll get you get your <laughs> dinner. It's all good. I got you. I got you. Thanks for that one. Okay, both players drawing the opening seven. Do we have keeps? Twelve will be on the play, which is huge. We've seen that. We've seen it be huge. We saw he was on the play in the game one and had that Thalia start and it wasn't but, enough. Yeah, but now he has Skrull and Thalia. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of your, all your removal. Okay, <laughs> already. Okay, yeah, cut cool. down. And it starts. And yeah. it starts. So it begins. There's a go for the throw of the top. All right, Thalia. Do you have another cut down? I don't, I don't, I don't see one. And a raid. And this is kind of the, like what people were talking about this deck this weekend, right? You're, they're playing a... Um, Thalia on two, but then they also have four wedding announcements in the main, which means they can't curve up and play it on turn Ooh, three. But there not we when go. you have this one. This is why we play it on turn three. We're going to attack. We're going to get the connive trigger. Draw a card, discard a card. I imagine a counter is going to go on it if we discard a non-land card. Yeah. 
the Rafine was such a sweet, sweet card. And it shows its power. I mean, like, the, the best draw, and I would say in the format, is turn one Skrelv, turn two Thalia, turn three Rafine. It's probably the best thing you can do. And uh, it shows its power here. No removal spell for Mikhail. He wouldn't have to have one mana spell just because the Thalia makes everything expensive. Plus the ward as well, and Rafine. Just so annoying to play against. There's a Commander Grix off the top. We do have a, a play of removal spells if we want them by mm -hmm. the looks of it. Yeah, there's a per Paris de Grasp. There's an Abraid. Things gonna go with the Grasp first. Yeah, I, I like the Grasp here. Take down that Thalia. Stop taxing my spells. Let me cast mm -hmm. what I need. Oh no, we're changing it up. You could also try to uh, play Corpse Appraiser, but I think it's going to come down to the following turn. So there's a Paris to Grasp. Game's a little bit of life, you know, and, and there's the damage that it always happens. So we're going to go back up to 20. This is going to go to the graveyard. Go. And we're going to pass in the turn back. Four lands, shield red, slammed, <laughs> go. I, uh, Torov just drew the best hand for that the deck can have. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, and like all your, all, all your best cards. All right, cool it. What's the best turn five you can do? Um, probably like some kind of double spell, like go for a throw and an Adeline. Okay, yeah, fair one, go for throw. Anyway, <laughs> get rid of your blocker, add two more things to the battlefield. So I did do a deck tech with Tarolf this weekend. it has been pumping out multiple times throughout the weekend. And he said, my deck is unbeatable if I have my mana plays and I curve off one, two, three. And we're seeing it now, but with the extra added step of putting a shield red in there. The card we've probably seen cast, I'd say maybe second most this weekend after Fable. Mm -hmm. But you know, this card is so powerful. Four drop, four five, draining gain, life link. But hard to kill. Yep. And a re reminder for everyone: this is the uh, best of three final. No, yeah, not best, only of, best five. of three. No, no, none of that here. <laughs> and that is, the PT does that. We are one step away, but we are sending thirty-six players to the Pro Tour this weekend. Potentially dropping down to like thirty-seven, thirty-eighth place, depending on how people were queued this weekend. But we are sending both of these players on your screen right now. You will see them at Worlds. Corpse Appraiser with Michael. I mean, he's behind quite a bit. But we, we already saw what a Gix's command can do. Yeah. Kill off the biggest creature and maybe destroy some other creatures as well. And, you know, Torov has just been jamming turn after turn. He, he has card selection thanks to Rafine, but he doesn't uh, really have that much card advantage. So let's see what he can do in five. Let's go. What's, what's the best five? You called it. So Adeline. Adeline and removal spell. Yeah, that doesn't let me have it. Oh, so targets the Rafine. I think he's going to try to... Um, he knows about the Geeks command, so I think he's going to try to discard two spells to it. So it grows up to a 3-6. Is Geeks command toughness or power or power? Sorry? The you... command is power. Okay, power. Cool. So uh, also gets a couple of triggers from the from the shielded, of course. And that's kind of the, the power of this deck. It's like the one-two punch, right? Oh, and this card's to Denix. Okay, so that the mission succeeded. Uh, three six uh, Rafine swinging through. One of the one of the better ones that he can put into his graveyard because he can recast them potentially even this turn if he wants to. <laughs> this is a big swing. This is seven points of damage that will drop Mikhail back down to ten. A lot of options, but Mika has been really on the back foot this this time around. Just drawing yeah. one cut down is not, not enough. You want to not many decks could survive the one, two, three, four punch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's still trying to hang on. Well, potentially, you know, next time we can have a go at trying to raft the board a little bit, mm -hmm. get the at least the shield red off, get a hit in for five life link. But yep, here's the Denik, uh, pious apparition That's coming in from the side, graveyard. Right? Yes, yeah, so on the other side, the three-two flyer. That helps um, you investigate. So now all the future courts appraisers won't be able to target things in the graveyard mm -hmm. to get the added advantage to them. They will just be generic free mana, free freeze. Uh, so now I think he's ha he has to go for the Gix's command, in my opinion. He, he What I think he's going to do is um, put two counters on the corpse appraiser, make it a 5-5, five, five, and have, it's going to have lifelink until the end of the turn. And he's going to make uh, Thorolf sacrifice the I think he's the got shelly. both in hand as well. Oh, he's got another, the other one as well. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So he's going to choose the two plus one plus one counters on the appraiser uh, and have uh, Thorolf sacrifice the creature with the greatest power, which is... Does get a clue, though. You know yep. what I mean? That could be apparent later on. Got a swing for five, gain some life back. But tapped out again, so uh, the initiative firmly back uh, with Thorolf. And then we're just going to pass the turn back. Can Thorolf start turning this corner? 
and shutting this door. Let's top card. That was, I think it was a shield dread. Oh, oh, another that one. <laughs> so <laughs> the game's command is really kind of working overtime three, here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think we're one off, right? It's very close. We're getting close. We're going to discard these two spells. Two more counters come on it. That's a swing for six, seven, eight damage here. Mm -hmm. And and also uh, by giving two counters on the Denic, the Pilot's Apparition, it now has five power. So it means if it, another one's if, command comes down, we can't get rid of the Shield Dread on the battlefield. Exactly. So so Mikhail has to find some other ways. Is Trolf coming back? Oh, he's, is he going to do this? He's been discarding the, the Raid of the Last Transmogrants. Uh, showing that he has plenty of stuff in reserve. Remember, there's <laughs> another Denning in the graveyard. Uh, he d even discarded Wedding Announcement. He knows he's super far Half ahead. Turn. Trigger. Big Big more. Step. It was a land. Can we put some sequence of spells together to try and survive here? And <sighs> it will be very difficult. What about... No, cut down is not going to do it. In this he can probably still survive if, if he does go for the Gixis command here. Well, again. Yeah, he gets, he gets a hit attack for seven, right? Mm -hmm. With Life Link, yeah. Yeah, probably again, uh, we got a bit of a deja vu. It's not often that you know someone casts two Grix commands against you, and yet you still end up losing the game. <laughs> Indeed, so that's four counters, making it a seven-seven. Shield Red's done this like, battlefield. So we can my seven-seven. Okay, I go to twenty. <laughs> so is this? Let's work out if this is leaf on the way back. So attack twice. So that's. Uh, seven, eight, nine. He was on five, I think, so he should be up to twelve. But now I think it's going to be a swing for at least seven here, possibly potentially two more, so nine, and then uh, the shoulder trigger on the upkeep, unless Michael has like a go for the toe, which I would say, I would say it's unlikely. He's gonna need something on these lines. He's cutting yeah. it close if he's got it. Let's have a look. I don't. There is a black card in there. I think it yeah, might be. That's a, it. A, no, yeah. you were right. Yeah, it's it. it the live tools weren't updating quickly enough. <laughs> okay, so. right. That's it. We're going to a game three in the Whew. finals. You know what? I love the uh, pace of play here. I mean, oh. I, Torov obviously didn't have that many options. He's just like, you know, slamming one, two, three, four, five, right? Yep. But like even Mika is just playing at a, at a really good pace. And I, I just love uh, seeing that sort of fast. Fun I magic. have inside information of why he's playing fast. He has to catch a flight. Okay. <laughs> he's got a flight to catch in about, I don't know, an hour and a bit. So he's playing super quick. He was very close to just not even playing the finals, but he decided, turns out playing for $6,000 is worth stacking around for. True. You can buy yourself a new flight if you want to. <laughs> Probably via Orlando if you wanted to go. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah go to Disneyland into. for a day. Exactly. Well, look, I'm not telling you what I'd spend my money on, but there's a good chance it would have something to do with that. <laughs> Both players are going to go to the sideboards. They do have open deck lists. They have played before. We have seen this matchup over and over and over. But Torolf might be making the comeback, making revenge for his team. You know, Mikel has been an absolute killer of his team all day long. Torolf has also lost to him in the Swiss. It's all <laughs> going to go down to game three, but Torolf is going to be on the draw. Yep. You know, Big the play. We've seen this take a huge difference. Also, Falia not coming down on, t on turn two is not as effective as it would be mm -hmm. if he was on the play. Yeah. Are, you, are you going to call it? Are you going to put eggs in one basket? Or are you gonna like, you no, know? no, I don't I don't want to commit either way. I'm, I'm more of a fence sitter. Fence sitter? Okay, let's see. Who who got fans over? Do we want yeah. Michael to win or do we want Trolf to win? Let's go for yeah, ones for Michael in chat. Trolf, let's see twos. Who do you want to take down and walk away as our European champion when they rock up to Worlds, when they rock up to the Pro Tour in a couple of months? Who do you want to see? Wow, a sea of twos. Uh, there's a one. Oh, no, I can see there's a couple of ones. ones. I can see some ones. You know, I, would, I would imagine that we have some Austrians in the chat. I, I know a few people who mentioned that, uh, all, all the that ones they're watching and following and uh, their friend. Some ones are making some comebacks here. Love to see it. Obviously, if you do like this sort of paper coverage, make sure you hit that follow button. We will be going live very shortly in the end of the month, I believe. We'll be in Prague, and that will be modern. So if you're a fan of modern, hit that follow button. You'll get all the notifications when we go live. Plus, on Twitter, you can stay up to date on everything that Legacy is doing. So if you want to go across there, have a little look, see. See all the photos from the weekend, see what you missed. See what is at these events. Cosplayers, artists, 
and there's a bunch of magic. I'm really keen to see what the next few cities are mm -hmm. that we're going to. Of course, you're going to um, Prague. There's an Athens, but there's going to be a couple more events. Couple more that haven't been announced yet. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm, I'm so keen to know. The main way to find out what they're going to be is from following the Twitter. That's how <laughs> I'm going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we don't know. I, I swear, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, the selections of cities so far has been really nice. I mean, we had the Barcelona, Trieste was a completely new, new location. There was never oh, a GP in Trieste. The weather this weekend has been extraordinary. Oh. Not that they let us outside, but yeah, you true. know, looking from afar, I can see the sunlight outside and the uh, people going outside and enjoying it. Both players finish shuffling up. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is the last game of the weekend. Let's make it a doozy, fellas. Let's go. <laughs> Looks like Trolf is happy with his handbrake. Doesn't get to decide first. I see a Shelly, a Bloodhead Harvester, a bunch of lands. Not the worst hand from, from Michael, but this no This is kind of what I'd call the aggro uh, draw. You know, yeah, a couple possibly. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. And we're both keeping. Nice. Let's go, gentlemen. Have a Land good game. Land spells. And turn one scrolls. I was like, not again. <laughs> yeah, th <laughs> this guy again. Please, please don't, please don't play a Valley next turn. <laughs> yeah, a bit Thanks. of a pain land heavy draw as well for for Michael. He does have another Xandos lounge, but he's going to start off with the Blood Tide Harvester in turn two. That that's one way to to get rid of a Skrull. But let's see if Torov has the curve. Do we have the Valley? I think we've got two drop. It just might not be a Valley. It's nope. a Denik. Okay, it's good enough. It's good Decent. enough. It's on curve. It's on curve. Yeah, but the the scroll is so annoying. Like on this sort of board, you always have to kill it first because you can't then hunk it much going. Uh, otherwise, I I think maybe Michael drew a graveyard trespasser. I don't quite see it through his thumb. Might no, be I think it was another scroll, wasn't it? No, I think it was the uh, not another scroll, another blood tide. Sorry. Yeah, it might might be. Yeah, it's always he... throwing me off when players go for different arts of the same card in the main deck. I mean, the cannons the special, yeah, of course. Yeah, the cannons special. This is coming down. Another blood token will be made. Okay. Are we are we on defense? Are we playing the pen? I'm curious how he decides to play, like because now Rafine's a huge issue. Does it look like we are playing defense here? Mm -hmm. That's another land off the top for Trolf. Gives him access to his third land drop. I do see some free drops in that hand, including one of the more powerful ones that we see, the Rafine. That might be what he slams down here. Might not have great attacks into all those harvesters. Of course, he, ha he has to remember a double block, but he still has also the scroll. So, so we do. There see she that come is. Down. This is attacking. One can I have trigger? Sphinx demon. Sphinx demon. Good creature type. Good creature type. <laughs> Another one that has multiple different arts of it. We're going to okay. land into the graveyard. So it's just going to be a two free life linker. Do we want to trade? Depends on what's what's in the hand. I I think. In general, uh, Michael, no matter what happens, he's going to try to uh, to kill the the Rafine. But with Skrulls on the board, it gets so much more difficult. Yeah, we can't do it at instant speed if we want to. So, yeah, th we're going to have this trade here. Two life is going to be gained over on Skrulls' side. And turn just getting passed back. All right, let's see what uh, what Michael can muster up. I know he, we know he has a, sh uh, a Shieldred in his hand. Well, that's another, another land. Another land. So free land, Shieldred, and I'm pretty sure it's another Harvester, but we'll uh, find out shortly, I'm sure. I was a betting man. Here comes down the Shieldred. Makes sense. Yep. One of the, probably the best forward drop we have. It's yeah. on the battlefield. Yeah, not, not much to do with the Blood Tide Harvester. Doesn't, it, he could have decided to try to kill off the Skrull here. But, ooh, Otawara ooh. in the upkeep. Gain some tempo. Do we have a two drop to follow this turn up though? That would be that, huge. That's important, yeah. I mean, the, the Rafine is going to connive, but I, Torov drew a, a bunch of lands here. Oh, he drew the table stroke there. That's Perfect. huge. Do Perfect. we have the untapped blue source? I, I, I'm pretty sure he has a, a has a land still. He discarded Caves of Coilos earlier, so he has a Shadow okay. Sanctum. And the Plaza of Hero is going to give him the blue mana that he needs. Oh my god, this could be the swing. Is he, make, is he getting revenge for him and his whole team? Might be a bit too hard to see, but he is taking that tempo and running with it. Michael needs to pause a little bit, do the, breathe in, breathe out, refocus. How, okay, I'm slightly behind now. How can I come, how can I get back from this? What could he have? He's got two mana up. And remember, Skrelv is protecting the Rafine on top of her own ward ability. So there's work to do for Mikhail. He, he, if he plays the Sheldred here, oh, this and, is oh, he's going he's gonna to get disdainful oh, Skrelv. This is, this is Boom. Oh. Okay. 
It's done. You got to move on. That happens. Yeah. We're in a bit of a bad place. Two cars left for him. Land for turn. That gets countered. I'm just <laughs> <w> <laughs> swinging. Again for free. Is there a reason why we wouldn't use this to kill the um, scrolls? Scroll, maybe yeah. potential other ones in hand, so there's no point doing it. <laughs> I would um, maybe now Torov can actually might think about attacking with both creatures here. Might not leave up the scroll to protect because he wants to get more knife triggers. Well, he'll be, he's going to be able to grow it larger than what the Blood Tithe can actually deal with here, yeah. right, if he targets this. Yeah, so we, we are go. coming in for two. Two knife triggers are going to happen. <laughs> he's no, thinking. It's a, it's a legit decision because, like, seeing one more card with with, uh, with the Rafine can be nice. And also, in theory, if he would per were to put two counters on a scroll, it would also not die to cut down that could come from the top. There were no play yet from, from Mikhail's side. I'm sure he would have loved to play it if he had yeah. it. But we're no, we're going good. in. Two knife triggers. That was a Falia plus what I think it was a black card. I couldn't quite make it out. It might be a go for the first. Razor Lash is going to get this carded. I think I saw the Transmogger in there. Uh, is it? No, just two lands. Two lands going to the graveyard. No extra bonus to these creatures. So they come across three yeah. points of damage. And I think that's why we, he elected to uh, go for it this way. Uh, just filter through, you know, get some extra draws and, and try to draw more relevant things because he, he, has, the, uh, he has the upper hand here. But now shields are down. I'm about to say a command, uh, Grit's command here would be huge. <laughs> I mean, it would cause an extra. There's a corpse okay. appraiser. Okay, that, that's not bad. That's not bad. That can block. That's a good okay. block on this board. It can't block the flyer ideally, but you know we can get it on. We can. Mikhail can paper. turn this around. I mean, uh, Torov has, I think, only one card left in his hand. Yep. He did. He. It's probably a spell because he discarded two lands off of the of the trigger, so he doesn't have that much going on. I think it might be a go for the throat left in hand, but don't okay. don't hold me to that. I think it was a black spell that he's managed to keep in his hand. So I think it's going to be another harvester, the mismatched one that he, he drew a couple of turns ago. Go. Get a third blood token, so you know we can potentially kill something if we want to. Now the scroll is tapped. Let's have a little look at it. Yeah, okay, I would like to do this. Try to kill the Rafine, pays the ward. Yeah. It's now, it was a 2-5, okay. so he needed the extra Harvester to get the third blood token, so that it is minus 6, minus 6. Oh, this is actually a big turn. Yeah, now Corpse Appraiser. Again, takes a couple damage. Don't mind that. We're going to get them to look. If we can exile one of these creatures, we're going to get a look at our top three, pick the best one into our hand. Ideally, I suppose we're probably looking for something like a Shield Dread, especially with this amount of uh, blood tokens on the battlefield. We can There's also a Denic. That's the most important one. Because that could have been played. A Braid. And a free kill spells. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> which kill spell would uh, you like? Embarrassment of riches. Must be nice for Michael here. I think go for the folks. The one I'm going to take here. Am I scared of anything like a bank bust on the other side? Obviously, we do have open deck lists. So let's see. Yeah. Nope, doesn't look like there's any of them on the other side. So I think yeah, I, I like go for the throw the most yeah. as well, especially because one of the cards that would probably be the most impactful from throw off side of the table would be a Shieldred. But the Corpse Appraiser draw was just absolutely massive. Yeah, he he had that Blood Tie Harvester. He knew that finally with the shields being down, he he can kill. Um, he can kill the Rafine finally, and even even a even a Shieldred now would still. Potentially could die to um, to the harvester, but Skrelv, I think is going to stay on the defense for a little bit here. So remind of people asking, this is a best of three. We did start the weekend with 471 players. We invited 110 of them back. We've now whittled it down to the final two. We have sent 36 to the Pro Tour. We have sent both these players two worlds on top of that. But one of these players is going to walk away with the trophy sat in front of us and a bunch of more money, and more importantly, the interview with yours truly. Obviously, that's what they're really playing for. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> burn, burn. You know, right. you know, I like to make you suffer. I love it. I love it. All right, Trolf, what are we going to do? We're falling slightly behind this. Good, sir. We need to start stepping this up. <laughs> yes, it's a Lauren. Not the best here. He would li love to destroy uh, something like a Fable. But he might just go for one of the blood tokens here. He's... Uh, he's not happy. I mean, all the early pressure was soaked up by Mikhail. There wasn't that much damage coming through, just a, a lot of uh, filtering through lands. And so now Torolf needs some haymakers. Arguably the best one we've been talking about would be the Shield Dread. But I think we're going to... Are we targeting? We're getting again? Sure. 
Okay. Once you get and through this, do damage. Red or black. Pays two life as well. And okay. Doesn't oh yeah, it gets rid of blood token. Not not super relevant, but it's just gonna you know, add into the board. Getting the two one for uh vigilance. Okay. Another land for, for Mikhail, but I, I don't think he minds. I think he has an invoke in his hand, so in theory he could also um use the harvester to kill one of the creatures, play invoke, draw into some cards. And we know that with the two blood tokens in play, he can filter through his deck that much more efficiently. As we said, this that, that two drop does a lot in the magic. It draws cards. It discards yep. cards. Here's Invoke it, Despair. It's going to cost six because there is a failure on the battlefield. Yep. <laughs> like, hey, Mickey, you forget about, you forget about that one. Now, what are we sacking here from 12 side? Probably the Lor Loran is probably the least impactful, I would say. He might want, want it to draw some cards, but there's the Invoke Despair with that Nice alternate art that I pulled up. It is a nice art, and you are absolutely flying on this card. <laughs> at the minute. You're all over it. I love to see it. Yeah. We're going to sack the Falia here. Mm -hmm. Potentially, that could be the card that's uh, kind of stuck in our hands. So it draws two. Fable. Like, here we go. We've seen the story. Grix is <laughs> mid-range, dominating the tournament. <laughs> Doing what it does. It was looking good as well for Troll for some at one yeah. point, but now it, you know, like this corner is being turned. We're just waiting for Michael to try and slam this door shut and take home this trophy sat in front of us. He's going to be able to turn up to Worlds and say that he was the European champion of season two. One of these two are going to be able to do that. Right now, advantage by is to the left of your screen. I want to know how many people actually looked for the advantage bar on their screen then, because that would be quite <laughs> interesting. It used to be a thing. <laughs> it used yeah. to be a thing. Skrelv takes, uh, goes to the graveyard as we cash it in our blood tide there. And right. pass the turn back. 3-3 three, three is a good block <laughs> against a 2-1. Yeah, Mikhail may be uh, baiting Torov. Oh, please use the Laura, and I, I do want more cards. Okay, so draw. We both draw. Okay. Another <laughs> yeah, table. Mikhail's like, okay, need more cards. Thank you. And a Denik. All right. Not what Torov wanted to see. We're going to cycle a blood token here and the turn ditch this land. Trying to make... Even more fables, maybe. Ooh, another Corpus Appraiser. Ooh. Jeez, it's just, the hand is just absolute gas here. Yeah, it's just mono gas. It's what I would call uh, Michael Robrock's hand. And Zanik came down. Uh, already, you know, caught uh, Michael by surprise once in the quarterfinals. For, forgot about the ability that Carson Gareth can't be the targets of spells or abilities. And uh, Corpus Appraiser. Just came down as a, as a lowly 3-3, three, three, but <laughs> Mikhail's ready one, this time. This is going to be a 1-2 hit, right? We're going to put it into the graveyard, then we're potentially probably going to exile it, I imagine. Yep, it's a play that's that the plan. On. That's one that's open to him. Looks like it's brought to the front. That is what he's going to go with. While we're leaving up, go for the throat as well. Yep, we're getting some extra um, life as well on the way. Now, the the firm is... The advantage buys firmly to the so, left. I mean, Mikhail the has Torov in a, in a headlock, basically, just trying to get him to tap out. And then again, look at another top three. More removal spells. <laughs> he decides to take. Yep, took. I think took the second go for the throat to pit in hand. Mm -hmm. So not. He didn't want another creature in there. He's already got enough creatures on the battlefield to close this game down. Twelve. Looking at the one lonely card he's got in hand. Yeah. Looking at Michael on the <laughs> other side. It's so itchy. A, a like he, he wants to fire it off the, that go for the throw. Like I, I want to play something now. I, I want to use all my mana. And he's gonna go for the go for the throw for the Loran. Doesn't want Torov drawing any more any more cards. And now. Swings and the clock is firmly ticking, and I think we're close to crowning Michael Rohrbach as the the European champion. And that's it. That is going to be the handshake, unfortunately for Troll. But congratulations to Michelle taking this down. We did start with 471 players. We are left with one, and his name is Michael Rohrbach. Exactly. That's my best attempt. Hopefully, the Germans and Austrians in the chat oh, are not angry with me. I'm going to butcher it in this interview. Like we, <laughs> I pronounce it as Michael. Yeah. So is it, I'll try and pronounce it as Michelle. But congratulations to him. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. We have reached the end. We're going to go try and get him, get him in here for a player's interview. And then we'll go close down the show. What a weekend it has been. That has been an absolute powerhouse of Grixis. Have more people bought it than anything this weekend. We put more decks into day two than anything else. We put more decks of it into the top eight 
and eventually we have got the winner as you see there on our screens beautiful graphics taking it down congratulations to him yeah Chat. That, there there he is and beating three s4 legends in the top eight. one after nasif Nico Boni, Torov Severin. I don't care how good you were, you are, how many Pro Tours you've won or top aided. I'm just going to go through you one by one. Doesn't matter. Hopefully, you can take that to the Pro Tour with him. We can see a big cheer from everybody out there as I feel like the news is filtering out across the tournament. But this weekend has been crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been so good. And he's literally not flinched once. He has managed to take down the only undefeated. He was the only undefeated going into the day one. He's managed to go into day two absolutely crush it he's gonna be kidding so chat if you've got any questions for him that you want me to ask this is your time to put him in chat while we go and get him in for our players interview any yeah. questions why he brought grixis along those lines let me know yeah i'll start noting Great. it down for you will is on it but i i think it just of course i think the s4 legend deck is the breakout deck of the tournament oh, i yeah. think it's probably you know with the highest one of the highest winter win percentages but grixis mid-range was the best deck and it won the tournament and with the special build i'm sure mikhail is going to tell you all about it as we're going to get him in here. We'll see if we can cut down to, to the full screen. Put that headset on, good sir. Sit down in this chair here. Uh, thank you. No problem. Well, first off, let's start with congratulations. This is your trophy. You get to take this home with you. Take that, wow. boy. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. And you get wow. a second trophy that I've just pulled apart. Lovely. I'll wow. it there you go. Fix it. You get wow. two trophies. Double, double the pleasure. Wow. First off, how does it feel? You're not only going to Worlds, you're going to Worlds as the European Season 2 champion. Wow, amazing. Uh, I didn't expect anything for the day. You um, didn't? No, it was my first day two on a big event. Wow. I only played two big events in my life. And, you, and the Bologna, second one, you take it down? Yes. Well, yes. congratulations Thank on that you. one. Thank Why you. did you bring Grixis this weekend? Um, Especially I, your build. Yeah, I tested online a lot in Arena okay. and saw that there's Mono Red, Esper Legend, Soldiers as good decks. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be prepared that decks with the cutdowns uh, with were. the gigs command and yeah i had the luck in the top eight to oh, to face legend, three legend, esper legend. legend decks. Exactly. you have got the and, the yeah. grixis build to absolutely hammer on these esper legends ones you yes, down all yes. three in your top eight something that needs to go for it so you had the four cutdowns we had yes. to cut some cards it looks like you cut the the bank busters what, what was your yes. reasoning behind that um i find the bank bust a bit slow because uh, i have to pay four mana to get the card back that i invested in the bank buster mm -hmm. so it's only good in slow control matchups and i find them also the mid-range matchups to be quite fast so yeah, if you're behind sure. if the opponent uh, lay down a fable and something it's hard to win so i don't want when i'm on the draw and i tap out for bank buster they go fable i maybe have a hard time but come you, back clearly your bill pay, yeah. it absolutely paid yeah. off for you one on it, Nico Stoney. We've got to give him a shout out. You know what I mean? His only loss all day yes. was to you twice. You know yes. what I mean? Like you were his absolute oh, kryptonite all day. Another Esper Legends. And that whole team did so well. It's almost the breakout deck of the tournament, but you came prepared to beat that deck yes. and absolutely yes. hammer it down. One other reason I have to thank you from the coverage team, bring in your own tokens. Oh. You literally brought your own tokens. It was <laughs> straight up, made our life so much easier on coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there anyone you want to thank or shout out at home? Anyone you came with, any testing teams, girlfriend, boyfriends, whatever you want to do, this is your time. Shout out to the camera. Everyone watching at home. Okay. Go for it. What, what, what I have to say? say? Thank, thank people. Okay. Do anyone to thank? Yeah. Thank you guys for all the support and for my team and my girlfriend and my brother and his girlfriend to come with me to that, Napoli. That's who's supporting you out there? Yes, yes. We were, we are here uh, in an in a Airbnb for four guys. Uh, uh, for two when guys do you fly home? Two, yes. I'm, I made a trip to, through Italy with my girlfriend uh, to, since two weeks. Oh, okay. And so you've been here a while. You've yeah. been preparing. And now yes. you're going to walk home with a little bit more luggage yeah. than you probably, yeah. probably you and actually probably wanted, and a little bit richer than you yes. started this weekend. And tomorrow we go to Rome and visit Rome. You're going to have a good time in yeah. Rome. Make sure you have a drink for me. On that one, thank I'm going to say you. thank you. We're going to get the cast thank and team you. back in. Congratulations yet again to you, Miko. If you want to take the headset off, but take these with you. These are yours. Thank we you. Don't need Thanks them. a lot. No problem. It was actually a pleasure doing your game. Ciao. It was an awesome Bye. weekend. All right, we'll see if we can get the casting team back in here, and we're going to close down the show. Let's move this round. We're going to get down. Matei's back in. He's managed to give uh, Torolf his second place trophy. Congratulations. Don't drop that. I imagine it's pretty valuable. Oh, what a weekend, chat. Jeez. I hope you've all enjoyed it. So we're going to sit down. We're going to get the ladies in behind us here. 
Come on, you two. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Let's get everyone we're, in we're here. Here. There you go. Everyone's back on screen. Right. So first, we need to start thanking people. First, we need to thank the Fox and crew behind us. They're the ones behind the cameras, the lighting, all the technical issues that we kind of throw at them. They're the ones that sort it out. Secondly, we need to thank Legacy. Put in on this paper coverage. They don't need to do it. They don't have to do it. They want to do it. So, and also, thanks for inviting us to do this because you know we love this job. So appreciate them. I want to thank these guys. These casters, all weekend, have had to pair up with me, asking them to do different things, having to cover all the standard matter. It's been great. Matei, I've learned on him so hard this weekend. His back's going to be hurting after this weekend, but I want to thank you. It actually thank does. It does hurt. <laughs> the ladies, I can't remember the last time that two ladies managed to, you know, uh, cast an event together at this such high level. So, again, great work by you two. And lastly, I think we need to thank you guys for watching. There is no stream. There is no coverage if it isn't for you guys watching. So, I want to thank you all there from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of these guys' hearts. And that's going to be it for us. Next time you can see us live, it's going to be in Prague, modern action. So make sure you hit that follow button. And that's it from us. See you all really shortly. Bye.